This is, we call this potato blight. And this is what made all our forefathers leave Scotland and leave all your forefathers to leave Ireland. So this is potato blight coming on the plants here. So it starts off as a tiny wee black dot. And then gets worse and worse like this. And then eventually it all starts to rot away at the plant that way. And then the wee potato itself starts to rot inside of it. So this is a good time for us to be harvesting. You can even see with the rain, it's dry. Yeah. Even the rain has been falling, it's dry. So these be early pears, so these be queens that we plant in here. Okay. Right, roll your sleeves up, kiddo. Right, take off your jacket there. I'll hold your jacket. Good man. And I want you to get your hands stuck in and you find all the potatoes and put the potatoes down here at the end of that bench. And you get well stuck in and see how many potatoes you can. Smash that whole thing up and break it all up as well, Jim. Well, like I said, you would see a lot of chefs now. You oh. know that, that that that. Gee, look at the size of that. You know that they. It's. I don't want to say use the word trendy. That they're growing their own vegetables on site. Like I remember, we used to go and pick. When I worked in Dare Manor, we used to go in our, and during our split, so-called mm -hmm. split, and we'd go picking bags of watercress and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, down the ponds and stuff like that, uh, or down picking your salads for the morning, for the afternoon, or whatever the case may be. I, I, was, I, was, on at, site. I was at an event just last night in Glen Bay Castle, and Chef Gary O'Hanlon was at it, he uh -huh. was talking gas chef, and he was saying that for a while it was fashionable for chefs to talk about using butternut squash from this part of the world, and this yep. from Paris, and this from Japan, this... But now it's when that complete river cottage idea, and it's all about the fresh produce, and yeah. it's all about local, where it be local meat, local pork, yeah, local yeah, chicken, yeah. local eggs, and same with fruit and veg. And I think we're all clever enough now to realise that when something's fresh, it tastes better. Yeah. There's more shelf life to it. Yeah. Everything about it is better. There's more nutrition in it. There's yeah. more natural sweet. Everything about it is better. And like that idea of even the smallest inner town restaurant is looking for a hair pot, a hair basket, a hair yeah. wheel. Something that visually connects it for the for the, the consumer that yeah. connects the fresh produce onto it. You can even see like you know I mean um, even Tesco's there, you know, they're selling their wee pots now, uh, like a yogurt pot with the seeds in it for growing chives or tarragon or tomatoes. You know, they've latched on even to it that you know people at home can grow their own herbs. It, it was a slight gimmick, but one of the best things that happened recent enough was McDonald's done cress seeds with a happy meal. Really? And the amount of kids that, that got into gardening, like for, for Three weeks, I could not go to a school or go to somebody's house where they wouldn't have the wee pot of cress grown that they got at McDonald's. For, for the aspect of grow your own stuff, it was fantastic. Wow. It really got kids into it. Like. There's another one as well, the far side. Now if I get these stalks out your way, so you can see here how it originally grows. This is where my hand is, is where the original potato was. And this big stalk comes all the way at the top of it. And the wee root comes off, and the wee root then swells see, into swell. a big potato. And you can see the way it grows up, all the wee potatoes coming off all the stems there. So I'll take these out your way, and you have another good pick through that. And that is the old potato we planted. That's the original seed right. potato, that wee bag there. You know, things like bringing them down and showing them all this, you know, really brings it home to them. You know, you can play videos and read books and all that. like you'd, you'd see on, on Twitter and stuff, like I'm, I'm big into the schools and I go to yes, nine or uh, I see that on Twitter, like, yeah. And kids love it. This aspect, and we can do this every day to the cows come home and St. Therese, Lenamore, St. Paul's, yep. Holy Family, they go clean mad for it. They go absolutely, any, anything from, from preschool upwards and even then from a chef's point of view, Yep. There's very few good chefs that don't do this. Yeah. You know, like you're talking about, you're talking about Le Manoir, you're talking yep. about then uh, Nevin McGuire, yeah. you're talking about Simon Duggan Wernbill, and stuff like that. He came down Simon to us. Duggan, you're talking yep. about, you know, even on local level, Brian McDermott, yes. yourself, all these lads are into fresh herbs, yep. Ian Orr, yeah. all about fresh. It's all about the freshest herbs. And from a chef's point of view, the challenge then is, well, the easiest thing is to phone something and get butternut squash 52 weeks of the year. But then it's when somebody comes in your door, a la ready steady cook with a bag of turnips and say, what can you make with that? Yeah. That For me as a consumer, that's what excites me to go in places. It's mm. not about getting butternut squash 52 weeks a year. It's about yeah. somebody saying, this is what I can do with mackerel. This is what I can do with yes. the humble spud. This is what I can do with five or six fresh herbs and a bit of citrus. Yeah. And I think from the consumer, I think that's that's where 
that's where the value is because these things are inexpensive you can yep. take that you know you're talking pennies of your cost but yep. then you can take that with pure skill and yep. take that into something in which is worth five ten fifteen pounds yeah any, any anybody can use truffles yes yeah and yep. make something very expensive but when somebody takes a spud cabbage basic ingredients broccoli and yep. a few edible flowers and a bit of eel or something yep. it makes it fantastic yep. i think that's that's where the, that's the thing where is, the is like. chefs have, have completely got away from seasons and seasonality and stuff as well haven't they you know that the a lot of the chefs coming out today just don't know when something is in season whether it be fish whether it be meat whether it be vegetables fruit or whatever like that and i'm trying to get back to that the class example is the apple yeah the apple apples and pears are winter stuff right. they're a winter veg uh -huh. whereas we associate a juicy apple with the summertime we associate oranges with the summertime but yep. they, they actually are winter things it's like the humble carrot the humble carrot is cheap in the autumn time because that's when it's in season yeah it's not cheap because mr tesco's designed to sell it cheap it's because in season and when Thumson's in season, you can get it locally, it contains more goodness, and in turn then, there's more flavour into it, so you can do less with it. And yep. when you start to grow your own, like the spud, you can grow 9 or 10 different varieties. The carrots, you can produce purple carrots, yellow carrots, red yes. carrots, orange carrots, and that's what's going to differentiate the burger cooker from the chef. Yeah, yeah, very good.